Well hello there, welcome to the channel. I always hate doing that part of the intro, it just feels so awkward to say that for some fucking reason. I am totally fine with talking to a camera but that part, that part, always, no, it's just, nah. Anyways, yes, another ADHD video, I know, I know, but you know what? Yeah, I actually don't know why I feel bad for making ADHD videos. Maybe that is something to reflect upon, but um, that is for another time. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about ways to be productive when you have ADHD. Mine is very difficult to be productive with ADHD, especially when you compare yourself to people who don't have ADHD. It can be very damaging for your self-esteem, for you know, motivation in general. And of course, there are loads of videos out there about productivity, but for the most part, those videos don't really apply to people with ADHD. You know, the tip that is always given, you know, get a plan. And it, you know, anyways, that is what we're going to talk about today. And uh, without further ado, let's just get into it. Okay, so I did write them down, but I didn't really specify in what order I would talk about them, which is very dumb of me, but we're just gonna figure it out as we go. Okay, the first thing. I know I just talked about people always saying you have to get an agenda and a planner or whatever, and this point may play into it a little bit, but it's not really quite the same thing, so I just, I wanna clarify that first of all. <laughs> so it's about making a plan for the day. If, whether you're working on school, whether you're working on a project, it's always useful to make like a planning of your day because people with ADHD, including me, have a really poor perception of time. Time. I have said it multiple times. I do not understand the concept of time. I do not understand the passage of time. It's just weird, okay? And if you have the same thing, it can be very difficult to actually divide your day up into tasks to do or to actually think of doing things because you just simply don't know how much time things are going to take. And you're probably also waiting for this appointment you have in your afternoon because you genuinely don't know whether you have time to do things before that or whatever. You know, I've been there. We've all been there. So this can really help. It's making a planning like this, okay? Having all the hours of the day under each other and the days of the week next to it. I used to do this on random pieces of paper but then my therapist gave me this one so now I'm using this one. This is one I really filled in a little bit. I use colors because I like colors and it motivates me to actually make the planning so yeah. If you have a planning like this you can actually fill in the hours that you have to do stuff and when you have appointments and shit so you can actually see visually what you have to do in a day and that can really help. <coughs> oh my god. Um, hi, Editing NC here, wait a minute. For some reason my laptop won't record audio, so I have to do it like this. I'm sorry, but this is editing me in the future. I just want to say it, if you want to use the planning thing, you have to put the planning somewhere where you can see it, because we are very visual people, you know, people with ADHD, if we don't see it, it's out of mind, you know? So just put it somewhere where you can see it, and then you probably won't forget it, even though after a certain amount of time it will blend into the background. But just try that, and I also really want to say, because I did not say it in this part of the video, I forget to use this planning all the time, okay? I just want to let you know that you don't have to feel guilty if you forget to use it because I forget to use it all the fucking time. But I do know that when I do use it, I'm a lot more productive and I have a lot more clarity in my mind. So I just want to give you the tip to make it. And it's not the same as buy a planner or buy an agenda because it's, it's not, okay? This is not a planner or agenda. You can do this on random pieces of paper. It's just a way to organize your time and thoughts, okay? It's not a planner. Don't attack me. I hate it when people say, use your agenda. Like, no, bitch. I forget to do that. <laughs> Anyways, bye. Then we get to point two, which plays into the planning part. You have to make a to-do list, okay? You can't really fill in your planning without knowing what you have to do. And the key thing is when making a to-do list is being as detailed as possible. Like write down all of those sub tasks, okay? Anything you can think of when it comes to the task, also write it down, okay? So when you get the list, you're actually like, okay, this is what I have to do. Because if you write them down, like very general speaking and stuff, then you're still going to think, wait a minute, but if I do that, I also have to do this and this, and then you are still going to end up doing nothing. Make them as tiny as possible. And I also want to say something about that because I try to do this, but when it comes to making to-do list, I have one swirling in my mind 24-7, as many people do. And when I try to write down things I have to do, I suddenly forget like half of the things I was thinking about. So just try to write down what you remember don't be mad at yourself for forgetting things i always get mad at myself for forgetting things but i want to like spare you that pain just don't do it okay but just try to write down what you remember okay and then you can put those to do things in your planner and when i say about this which is thing number three always overestimate the time that you will need to do certain things so let me tell you a little side note about undiagnosed nc okay when undiagnosed nc i'm nc by the way i didn't talk about that but that's me <laughs> when i was going through high school and i did not know i had this thing 
thing called ADHD. I would make a planning for exams or whatever. And when I would make that, I would suddenly plan like eight things in one day because I thought I had the time to do those things. And I thought I would be fast enough to do those things. But if you are a rationally thinking human being, you may think, wait a minute, and see eight things in one day when you also have to go to school. I don't think so. So my tip to you, overestimate the time you will need to do things, okay? It's not to say that you can't do things fastly, it's just to say that we don't understand time, so we probably think we do things faster than we actually do them. You can like usually assume that we take a lot longer <laughs> to do things than we actually think. Okay, but now you've made your planning, you know what you have to do, but the real problem usually hits people with ADHD when they actually have to do those things. Because motivation is sometimes very hard to find. There's sometimes a lot of mental blocks. There are a lot of things that influence why we just don't do things sometimes. So I have some tips to help with that as well, naturally. You always want to start with something that you know you can do. Start with a task that you feel comfortable doing, that you feel confident in doing, and that you just know you're going to succeed at. And preferably that also does not take that much time. Um, that way you have kind of your kickstart, you know, you know you can do it you succeed at it you do it you feel good and then you're like okay I can move on now okay it's an easy step in task if that makes sense don't start with the algebra don't start with the math just don't do it or physics or that type just don't don't hurt yourself like that hopefully you got started doing the task okay if you can't get started that is also fine sometimes we people with ADHD get stuck in ADHD paralysis or we just get stuck in whatever that is fine take the time you need to prepare yourself to do things because if you keep beating yourself up for not being able to start then it's just going to get worse and then you're not going to do anything anymore and i know it's very hard to actually do that because you know i've been there i'm still in there most of the time just try to remember that you have this thing in your brain that makes it just a little bit harder to do those things and it's totally fine if you need more time to actually complete tasks or to get started on tasks and it's fine okay that's part of it it's okay um that being said <laughs> one of the things that that get people with ADHD like running and doing things is stimulation okay a lot of the time things are just not stimulating enough for the ADHD brain to actually get us to engage in those things good examples of this would be textbooks without any pictures or without colors or without anything wait I have a very good example of this look at this book is this thick let me show you the inside it looks like this on the inside So this is an example of a book that's just not stimulating at all and when I had to read stuff like this it took me so long, so long to actually do it. So when you have to read something like this or make notes on something like this, a tip would be to get some novelty in there. So to stimulate yourself, to make this a little bit more stimulating, you can find a highlighter with a nice color that you can highlight with, a new pen so you can write it because I, you cannot underestimate the power of new pens and new mark and new highlights and all that stuff. You cannot underestimate the power of new stuff for the ADHD brain. Make sure you add some nice colors, add pictures to it. You can also try a new software to read stuff in a different way. I recently started using a drawing tablet to make notes and that motivated me so much to just just get things done so I got things done very quickly. You could also try to make it a competition. That's another tip that will also stimulate your brain. So make it a challenge with one of your friends, you know, see who can read it first, who can make notes first, or if it is about a project, see who can do this and that first. You can create a deadline for yourself. You can try to make an imaginary deadline, but that is a tricky one because most of the time you will know subconsciously that that is not the real deadline. So you will still stall and wait for the actual deadline, but you could try. It's tricky though, it's tricky. It could go wrong, but you can try it. And another thing you can do to stimulate your brain, which is another tip, is to make sure you can move. I know a lot of the time we try to, you know, make people with ADHD a little bit more calm, make sure they don't move their feet or hands at all times, you know. But this stuff, movement and that stuff can be used to make you more productive. Because if you can move your leg, if you can move your hands, you are instantly more productive. At least I am instantly more productive because you have some sort of stimulation that you do to yourself. Constantly moving, constantly using your hands, doing whatever. That is a form of stimulation to stimulate your brain if you don't have enough of it. So take advantage of that and actually give yourself room to do that. If you are able to do it, standing up can be very nice. So you can like walk around the space. Another thing you can do that has to do with stimulation and novelty is use different spaces to do your work don't do your work in one space only because that is going to bore you eventually go somewhere else and i can guarantee you you will be more productive if you are in a new environment you suddenly feel this flow of productivity at least i do sometimes if you are in a space 
that is different than your own, a public space, chances are there are also other people there. Which brings me to my next point, which is body doubling. If you do not know the concept of body doubling, it's like an accountability partner, in a sense. It's the thing that when you're in a room with another person, you are suddenly more productive. That person does not have to do work, does not have to do the same thing you are doing. That person can do something entirely different than what you are doing, but you're still more productive because there's another person in the room. But I do not know the science behind it, I just know it's a thing. <laughs> so, if you go to a public space, there are people there, and they can just be your body doubles. Or contact a friend, and now you may say, Incy, I am more productive when I'm with other people, but other people's noise just kind of, you know, makes me less productive because it distracts me. Well, <laughs> I have a solution. The solution is noise cancelling headphones. No, they are expensive. I know, okay? I'm not going to underestimate that. But if you can afford them, it is the best thing ever. You can still take advantage of body doubling and being with other people while hearing absolutely no noise that could distract you. And you can listen while you're wearing them, which brings me to my next point. Look at me with these smooth transitions. Listening to music can really help you be more productive. And I would specifically recommend instrumental music, because if you like me, then lyrics from songs distract you when you're listening to music. So just find something that does not have lyrics. I know a lot of people with ADHD enjoy lo-fi beats. I enjoyed them for a long time as well, but then I got distracted by the beats. Um, don't ask me how that happened or how that works, but it does distract me. <laughs> so now I listen to kind of smooth instrumental game music because if I don't listen to music then my brain is going to make up the music and my brain doesn't make up like great music. My brain's music kind of consists of thoughts, things I have to do, random things and just random shit. So I prefer to drown out those things with just an instrumental smooth music thing. Okay, next thing. I do not have a smooth transition for this one. I'm sorry. But the next thing is... I forgot. Wait, I forgot. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my goodness. The light is playing with me really hard. Okay. The next thing is rewarding yourself when you have completed something. The light's reflecting on the microphone. That is a new level of annoying. Oh my goodness. So if you complete a task, if you have completed like a little tiny task, reward yourself with maybe some free time, a snack, with whatever. Something that stimulates you. I know when I was little, I really liked those stickers. Just use something, you know, you could use like a very bare minimum stupid shit. I'm gonna fix the light. And then we get to the next thing. I'm sorry, the transitions are over. There's no transition moment anymore, I think, because I just, no. The next thing is clean your space. I know it's hard. This tip already requires so much planning and so much trying to do this that I know it's almost impossible for a person with ADHD. But if you have the mental space and if you have the energy to do it, the motivation to do it, try to clean your space. It can be very, very helpful when you're doing certain tasks because I know everything can distract an ADHD brain because I have one myself. Um, but if there are less distractions, it can be better and it does really help declutter your mind a little bit as well. And I know I say that with this behind me, the wall with so much stuff, but you know what? Just, just take the advice. Just take the tip. <laughs> that I give these pieces of advice doesn't mean I always fo follow them. You know, my desk right now is one fucking mess. I do really want to say that when I didn't have medication, I could not clean my room for the life of me, okay? One of the things that tell me that my medication is working is whether I want to clean my room or not. If I take my medication, my room is usually clean because I clean it. But if I don't take my medication, then it turns into something else just within a day okay so i do want to recognize the privilege that i have with taking medication that does help me clean my space otherwise i would be right there in that boat with you with the messy room and not being able to do anything because you can't really clean by the way a tip i have for cleaning your room if you do not have motivation to do it Sometimes when you put on a video or like a podcast in the background, your brain will think you are watching that and then it will be a lot easier to clean your room. Like distract your brain from the awful task of cleaning your room by also watching a video in the background, okay? It's all about distracting your little peated brain. Okay, let's get into the next thing. <laughs> it is getting ready, okay? If you're staying home when you're working on this project, if you're trying to be productive, still get ready. Put on your clothes, put on your makeup if you want to, Put on your shoes if you want to. And I'm kind of being a hypocrite right now because I decided to do things today and I have my sweatpants on and I have my pajamas on and I specifically put on a bra only for this video and makeup only for this. But I did brush my teeth and that is a whole step on its own, I feel like. I feel like. It is very much underestimated how much energy brushing your teeth costs, okay? Do not underestimate it. 
The next one is something that helps certain people with ADHD. It doesn't help me, but I thought I would include it in this video. It is the Pomodoro method. It's like when you work for 30 minutes, then you take a five minute break and then you do that again. I know this can really help people with ADHD because then you know you're gonna get a reward of free time after you work for 30 minutes. And then you can actually be more productive because you also have a deadline. It's kind of a race, you know, the 30 minutes, but it just, it doesn't work for me because I will give myself two hour breaks after working for 30 minutes. I do know that it helps a lot of people with ADHD. It's worth trying, okay? Then playing into that, very obviously, just take your phone away, put it somewhere you can't see it, because then you'll probably forget that it exists, because we ADHD do not have object permanence, so <laughs> play into that, okay? Play into the object impermanence. Turn off the sounds and shit, then you will forget it's there. Then we have play into your strengths, so object impermanence is kind of a strength, I guess, but like if you know that you work better if you do everything in like three hours time, do that. If you know you work better in the Pomodoro method, do that. Try to work with your brain instead of trying to teach it things that it just isn't made for. Then we have one that is very random at this point of the video, but visualize stuff. Visualization is everything. It's everything I want. It's everything I need. It is, it's magical. And this also really depends on whether you're a visual learner or not, I guess. But I think a lot of ADHD are visual learners. When I had to make a film analysis, I wrote everything out on post-its and put it on my wall. It's about seeing things. Same thing with a planner you have to see it you have to visualize it for yourself and this visualization also really plays into making things fun for yourself making a topic interesting to yourself is just very important to motivate you because the adhd brain works interest based so if you're interested in something you are way more likely to do stuff about it that's probably why you know a lot about really random subjects because you're interested in them and suddenly you could absorb everything that is to know about it that is because your brain works interest based so make the topic fun for yourself how do you do that well by things i mentioned before how do you make something like this interesting for instance well i made summaries of the chapters that i had to read full of color full of pictures i can pull it up right here okay i added pictures i added colors i made the font look nice i did everything i could that made it look interesting and stimulating because also do not underestimate the power of the font okay choose a font that you like okay it, it works wonders if you choose a font that you genuinely like then you're going to want to write in it and then you're going to do the task okay don't underestimate the power of the font and the last thing i really want to mention is that you have to allow yourself to get distracted please forgive yourself for not being productive for a day please forgive yourself for not getting things done it's totally okay to not be productive and by not being productive i mean not being productive in the neurotypical sense a productive day for us can look very different than the ones of neurotypical people just keep that in mind you work different and it's fine just forgive yourself for not being productive enough because you are productive enough okay you're trying that is the best thing you can do okay trying is so important okay that you're still trying says it all okay that's amazing that's great i'm proud of you i love you Okay, so that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I might make a video about being productive in like specific areas. So writing papers, reading things, you know, but I'm also still figuring out how to do these things. Okay, I hope that you know when I give you these tips that I am not like the best at these things. Okay, I give you these tips because I know they work, but I'm also a person. So I also do not always do these things. Okay, I forget to use this like 90% of the time. I forget to make to-do lists. I forget to do everything. It is okay. We are all in a learning process. Um, do not feel like you have to be perfect or have to be super productive now do you know these things just cut yourself some slack it's fine so if you enjoyed watching this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up you know comment something down below i'm always so happy to read comments and i'll see you in the next one peace what do you think of my poster wall i made it yesterday because i was so sad and i didn't really want to feel sad so i distracted myself by making this what do we think what are we thinking about it Anyways, bye.